Hi everybody, we're at Crybaby Performance again, and this is, I think, Timing Tech 3 video. Uh, this one's gonna be a real fun one because this one's on timing keys. So again, we're working on the UT3 uh, 120 motor, and we have the degree wheel set up on it, and instead of having any key in there at all, we have a straight key. So he's gonna spin this motor and we're gonna see where it's at. But it factory has... factory stock key magnet green wheel magnet honda advertises this engine i believe don't quote me 25 degrees right and then right here these are timing keys and there's all different ones they have little numbers on them these are straight from honda now this is a straight straight zero key doesn't say zero but it has a little punch mark in it and on the other side it's just a straight flat key that's what we have in there that's what these engines come with from the factory now you can take this key that's notched and this has a six in it so depending which way you put this on the shaft you can either advance the timing or retard the timing. So this would go on, onto the crankshaft. This is in the retard position. This is in the advanced position. So, now this key is a six, is a number six. That's pretty aggressive. See that, that slot in there? You're moving the flywheel that direction. They say about eight thousandths of an inch is worth one degree of timing. So now here we have a three key. It has a mark on it that says three. These are genuine Honda keys. I ordered every one they had just to check them out. So see how that slot is much more shallow than this slot. That's only gonna move it three degrees. This is gonna move it six degrees. Okay, where's the Baker key? This key is a seven key. That's pretty drastic. Now, if you don't wanna buy a key like that, you can take a stock key like this and you can machine the groove in there. And then with a file, you can file across it to fine tune the key. On this engine, it wants to be, per USAC rules, 17 degrees, plus or minus, that's the debate. So you have to put the key in the retarded position. So, okay, we got the engine with a zero key and we'll see where this comes from Honda. So it comes stock with 25 degrees of timing. Now we're going to take it off and, and put a different key in. So the degree wheel is coming off. And he's going to have to take the flywheel off. So he's putting the nut back on. Because you do not want to hit the threads. He's putting a screwdriver behind it in that spot and it's going to take one or two wax to get the flywheel off. Oh, it took three. Flywheel's off. The flywheel goes on a tapered shaft. So here we're going to show you a tapered shaft. If you understand a tapered shaft, the flywheel is tapered here 
and that's tapered there. When you put the nut on there and you torque this on there, there is no way in hell you're moving this. You don't even need the key in here and this flywheel will not move. If the, in, if the car slams the wall and has a sudden stoppage with the tires, it might get this fly, that's the only thing that will get this flywheel to move. But if you're regular racing and these are pinched together, it's not gonna move. Well, with and the key in there, it's never moving. With the key, it's never moving. But it's like your drill press at work. If, you, if it has a tapered shaft, you put the tapered shaft in there, lock it together, it's not moving. Okay, okay so here's the key right here, which this one's pretty tight on there. Uh, a lot of times they drop right out. Didn't take much to get it out. And now we got one with Let's try a three degree. Okay, three degrees. Okay, now the other thing I want to point out is with this flywheel on here, you can rock the flywheel this way or that way. This, I'll give you a little more gap. That way or that way. That's how much slop is in. Wow, there's that much slop in the key? So that's about two degrees. So that's going to advance it like something. If only if you hold it in the forward position. If you hold it in the reverse position, you're gonna retard it. But if you hold it in the neutral position, you kind of find we're looking for the neutral position, but I could hold it forward or move it back. It's gonna change the timing. So if you know nothing and you just want to advance the timing, you could loosen that nut, jerk the flywheel forward and tighten it back up and you're advanced. Well, you'd have to pop the flywheel off. Yeah, and, right. And your timing would be off then. All right, that was a three degree key. So we were just under 25. We'll see if we're just under 28 now. timing wheel on 180 off. Okay, that's like putting a distributor in backwards. Again, green magnet all the way at the top, at the leg. Top set, top dead center, arrow at top. check 
to make sure our degree wheel hasn't moved, so I'm going to do that real fast. Let's put the tube stop back in. T piston stop. I mean piston stop, and uh, just going <clears> to <throat> rotate it backwards and forward. And 20 is 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Back to the other side. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay, we're back lined up twenty seven, twenty seven. Sure to take the tube stop out. Piston stop. Piston stop. Sorry, being in a tube business, we use tube stops. Okay, it was 25, now it's 26, 27, and it tips over 28. Advance your mode of three degrees. You don't even have to do the timing. The number's right on the keys. So now let me tell you something. I drag race Oldsmobiles. We've raced most of my life. And you're looking for that magic number on the timing. An Oldsmobile likes 36 degrees. A Chevy likes 40 degrees. And I've never tried to get the max timing out of one of these engines. But if you sack could save themselves a whole lot of grief if they would just do away with the timing rule, which means open timing. Open timing means everybody has a free-for-all to run whatever key they want in their engine. What would basically happen is everybody would, the engine builders and individuals would find where that where that breaking point is. It could be 28 degrees, could be 30 degrees. And then there would be no advantage to putting 35 degrees or 40 in when you know 32 is the max the engine will run at. It wouldn't take long to figure that out. That would level the playing field and then you wouldn't have to do any timing tech and we wouldn't have any DQs for timing. Now tell them what happened in North Carolina for all our haters. Okay, the key that we had when we took the flywheel off, this is why I know so much about timing because they DQ'd me and then publicly humiliated me or tried to anyways, calling me a cheater and a liar and this is kids racing. But anyway, the key fell out. I didn't know which way it went in. I put it back in, put the flywheel back on and then naturally... Um, I had a 50-50 shot of getting this key back in there the right direction. Because there's no marking on a custom ground key. And it's kind of like taking a quarter and flipping it five times. You know, heads, tails, head, tails. Okay, we put it back in. 
we were wrong. I didn't know how to check timing. And then we went to the race <coughs> and they DQ'd us because the car was naturally faster. But um, well, I think they publicly humiliated us and then DQ'd us. And that was that was fun <coughs> for kids racing. So anyways, that is what a timing key will do for you. Right. All right, this concludes our video on timing keys. So you guys got to stay tuned. You cannot miss out on internal timing videos coming up. Here. <coughs> Cam timing. Cam timing. Boy, that one's going to be a fun one. All right, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.